Okay. I will talk to you of non-invasive and in situ analysis by visible reflectance Raman and FDIR spectroscopies in the scope of cultural heritage. For many years now, the field of archaeological and historical studies has been interested in the contribution of scientists. The knowledge about the materials utilized in artwork coming uh, from the chemical physical characterization, joined with the information gathered from historical and archaeological studies, can be both the starting point to which a complete understanding of a piece of art, and more in general, a precious tool available for the art conservators, also in the hypothesis of restoration work. The field of cultural heritage science is enormously vast, and today I will focus on one of the main issues, that is the characterization of pigment. In fact, the identification of the materials employed in the realization of painting objects of historical and artistic value could be crucial since it can provide vital information such as the painting techniques and the availability of natural pigments and or the capability in the production of pigments from raw materials and consequently about the technological expertise in a particular historical period and the importance of the patron. Moreover, the study of the artist's pigments can also allow detecting possible previous restoration or conservation work. In some cases can even provide information about the authenticity and or dating of the artwork. By the end of this presentation, you will have a more precise idea of, of how instrumental analytical techniques can be applied and be efficacious in the scope of the comprehension of works of art, their intrinsic value and their importance in the history of human culture. The characterization of painted materials is commonly performed by means of different analytical techniques and most often the achievement of a comprehensive identification of the painting techniques and palettes involves both the elemental analysis and the spectroscopic techniques, such as scanning electron microscopy, X-ray fluorescence, vibrational spectroscopy, uh, vis visible reflectance spectroscopy, and diverse imaging techniques. Their combined use, especially if we refer to non-destructive and or portable ones, must be considered a breakthrough in the characterization of the artist's uh, palette. The first case study I want to show you is mainly focused on the identification of the color palette of the Roman painting, uh, painted wood relics found during a rescue excavation in the Monte d'Oro area in Rome and intends to integrate the context of the copious number of important studies about Roman painting materials already present in the literature. The dating of the findings made at first by archaeologists was between the first century BC and the first century AD, but since those pieces were not ascribable to any nearby ancient construction, it was not possible to assign them to a definitive artistic historical context. The dating, uh, sorry, the analytical survey had indeed the purpose of providing historians with the useful information to attempt to fill this archaeological gap. The analyzed wall pieces were selected with the aid of archaeologists and involved um, seven painted shirts that having undergone a naked eye examination seemed to cover the whole range of the available reddish yellowish hues, namely bright red, red, pinkish red, purple, orange, and yellow. The firstly, a uh, preliminary uh, morphological and compositional screening was performed through SEMEDX. The examinations were performed on the fragments as such, as the analysis was carried out at low vacuum condition, no coating application was required, and the selected fragments were small enough to enter the device sample chamber. Some EDS semi-quantitative analysis values were obtained as the average between three and nine measurements on different areas, depending on the sample size. The elemental analysis revealed on all the samples a high content in calcium, silicon, aluminum, and potassium, probably because of the presence of calcareous siliceous matrix mixed with the pigments. 
Apart from that, each sample presented a characteristic composition pattern that allowed some preliminary hypotheses with regard to the pigments. For example, you can see the X-ray fluorescence spectra obtained on the orange and bright red um, shirts too, and the results of the semi-quantitative chemical analysis obtained on the same orange sample. The second table shows the compositional average, average percentage values obtained from all investigated shirts. As you can see, the orange one is characterized beside the aforementioned main elements by quite high iron content uh, that suggested the presence of ochre on that sample. The bright red sample two shows instead a significant presence of mercury and sulfur that led to thinking of cinnabar. To summarize, it can be stated that the bright red samples were both mainly characterized by the presence of mercury and sulfur, whereas with the exception of the pink sample, which will be discussed later, in all of the other cases, the main component was iron, found either alone or together with lead, in the, uh, like in the yellow sample. Finally, I want to add that the bright red sample one also gave the unmistakable signals of gold. The, the, the latter result that consisted in a revealed percentage of gold equal to 95.4% was not included in the table <clears throat> since it refers to a spot analysis performed on the gilded area of the sample. The distribution of gold were also, was also determined to try to figure out a possible meaningful shape, but um, it wasn't the case because the area was too little. Moving to Raman analysis, non-invasive measurements were carried out by both a benchtop uh, micro Raman spectrometer and a Raman portable device equipped with a fiber optic probe. The presence of the, pre the previously mentioned cinnabar on both bright red samples was confirmed. In the upper part of the figure, its characteristic spectrum is shown. The lower spectrum instead refers to uh, the yellow sample and indicates that yellow ochre was used. In fact, the band at 391 centimeters to the minus one power is certainly ascribable to goetite, whereas the band at 1086, 712, and 284 centimeters to the minus one are due to calcite. Then the spectrum obtained on the orange sample appears uh, as the overlapping of the bands of red ochre, real, um, red ochre yellow oxide, uh, lead, uh, sorry, uh, yellow lead oxide known as massicot and calcite. And was also present some ochre identified by a shoulder at 391 centimeters to the minus one that was not indicated in the figure in order to simplify the overview of the, of the principal components. I want to highlight that the latter outcomes represent effective examples of the well known peculiar performance of micro Raman spectroscopy in the identification of pigments which is especially evident when they are obtained as mixtures of different substances. The being sample has been immediately deemed a separate case study because of the peculiar elemental composition, especially the presence in high percentages of mercury and lead, in addition to phosphorus and vanadium. Then the sample was analyzed by Rana spectroscopy with widespread probing of its massive, massive surface. The obtained spectra show the well-known bands of cinnabar and the band at uh, 1,085 centimeters to the minus one of the calcite, not shown here, was also detected all over the surface. Um, uh, it seemed so possible in that case, more than in any of the other cases, that calcite was employed as an extender, even if, if uh, its presence seems in agreement with the use of a fresco technique as well. Indeed, one statement does not exclude, exclude the other one. The first results obtained by routine Raman investigation were quite surprising because on the basis of previously mentioned uh, SEM ADX outcomes, it was supposed to find at the very least some lead-based substances. Therefore, the samples have also 
been deeply investigated with the micro Raman device exploiting its peculiar spatial resolution and therefore being able to perform the measurements on single grains. This made it possible to recognize besides cinnabar and capsite also lead oxide PDO in its tetragonal form and known as litharge that is red. Um, it should be also noted that different features was achieved, were achieved moving on from one grain to another over a small scratched area of the sample. It must be stated that the signatures of the charge were hardly detected, uh, detected on the sample. In fact, mainly the bands of cinnabar and calcite were observed, and this led to thinking that the, the litharge layer was an underpainting under the cinnabar one. All those outcomes did not explain the presence of phosphorus and vanadium, since no Raman bands attributable to related compounds were detected. Therefore, the archaeologists allowed us to collect a tiny grain of the pink sample in order to acquire an ATR uh, FTR spectrum. Our micro FTR spectrometer was not available at the moment. Then a really particular feature was observed in the spectrum, namely the presence of the two quite intense, oh sorry, intense bands at um, 590 and 560 centimeters to the minus one attributable to calcium phosphate as apatite or hydroxy apatite. It must be stated that the presence of silicate recognizable by the bands around 1000 centimeters to the minus one and probably due to the cluster has made the detection of phosphates more challenging since several important features of calcium phosphates themselves are hidden. Hydroxy apatite is the main component of bones, and these findings agree with the presence of another white pigment that is bone white, used as an, as an extender either together or in place of calcite. Bone white is a great white material that has been utilized since antiquity and can be obtained by burning of uh, animal bones at high temperatures. According to published data, bone white as a pigment seems not so common uh, in Roman painting um, found in the literature, and the performed analysis substantially confirmed the archaeological hypothesis that these samples is to be considered a unicum among the recovered both painting remains. Finally, it is uh, worth underlining that only these pink samples show the presence of radium concurrently with phosphorus. And it was really intriguing to discover that it is not common that vanadium can be associated with bones. Then, since our main goal was uh, to utilize portable instrumental techniques, a very versatile colorimeter was employed as a visible reflectance spectrometer. spectrometer giving some very interesting results in the discrimination of pigments. As shown in the figure, the wide dissimilarity between the spectral features resulting from two different red samples is immediately appreciable. Then the spectra of all the analyzed samples um, are shown, whereas on the right side, the first derivatives are reported. The latter were calculated for more precise reading of the point of flex for each of the original reflectance spectra. What is immediately uh, noticeable is the clear difference between the general trends in the spectra of iron-based pigment, uh, um, um, sorry, uh, with cinnabar. Um, in, the case, in the case of the light sample, the flex point is quite shifted with respect to the red and violet ones, as you can see uh, there. Conversely, the reflectance spectra of cinnabar-based pigments show the sigmoidal shape typical for semiconductor materials characterized by a dramatic ascent in the inflection point, in this case located at about 605 nanometers for bright red samples and slightly below 600 nanometers for the big sample. The dot vertical lines uh, were added to better point out this variance, which was more evident in just discussed red ochre samples. 
For a complete digression of visible refractions capabilities, it would require hours. How, uh, so let's move on the conclusion of this part of the, of the, of the work, if I have um, time, but I don't know. Uh, anyway, no traces of organic substances were found. So the hypothesis of fresco technique was, um, was made. Then multifaceted, faceted, and precious color palette was found. So mixed pigments and overpainting, cinnabar, and gold leaf, leading to uh, a probable importance of the pattern. Then, from our methodological point of view, the the remarks were that the, the usefulness and strength of a synergic analytical approach, the forceful, forcefulness of laboratory microdestructive and non-destructive measurements, the feasibility and effectiveness of portable run and visible reflectance instrumentation, and the possibility of an in-field analysis, i.e. directly on wall paintings. Let's move to the next case, that is an in situ. Uh, uh, campaign. This Renaissance polychrome earthenware bas relief is property of the ancient art museum of the Castello Sforzesco in Milan, where it, where it is also shown. And it is attributed to the workshop of import, uh, the great Italian master Giovanni Antonio Amadeo. Recently, the artwork underwent an important and necessary cleaning operation since the surface was entirely covered by a dark layer of material that settled over the decades, as you can see from the two pictures that are before and after the cleaning. On the occasion of this conservation work, a diagnostic campaign of the work was engaged in order to identify the pigments primarily for helping the conservators both to intervene as properly as possible on the surface and then to verify the possible presence of incongruent materials caused by prior and undocumented intervention or restoration work. The bus relief has in fact a long and complex story characterized by mean uh, that many documented um, transfers of ownership and this scientific study is just a part of a complicated path toward the recognition of the artwork as an original of Ant Giovanni Antonio Madeo's work. After the cleaning, the beautiful bus reliefs uh, showed its original colors, and especially interesting was the revealing of the Madonna grain peel, whose was not distinguishable before. The earthenware was analyzed by means of non-invasive and portable Roman spectroscopy. Indeed, it made it um, possible the in situ characterization of the compounds utilized for decorating red, white, and black areas. A mixture of um, cinnabar um, sorry, <laughs> the bas relief. Okay, the the white the white points that you can see as uh, orange points on the figure was made of lead white. That is basic lead carbonate, and it is an uh, inorganic, not natural or artificial pigment. Um, then. The, the red areas were recognized as cinnabar, and you can see also uh, a bit of lead white. But the most uh, interesting points were the skin tones. Uh, a mixture of cinnabar mixed with lead white was employed for the complexions and also barium sulfate was widely detected on these points, which is to ascribe to a previous restoration work, since that synthetic pigment start being, started being used from 1920. Finally, lead white and carbon black were found on the letter T on the white ribbon. I want to emphasize as at this point, the Brahman spectroscopy is especially useful in the positive detection of carbon black. Whereas most of the other spectroscopic techniques deduct its presence just following the lack of other black chromophores. Therefore, this unique feature of Raman spectroscopy finds application in all that field 
that require detection of carbon-based materials, for example, graphene, carbon nanotubes, etc. Given the results in these in situ measurements, a further analysis will be carried out. At last, the last case study I want to show you is uh, this one. Uh, um, it concerns the San Mauro altar in San Salvatore Church in Pavia, that because of its size and construction, it is assumed to belong to the Baroque decorative phase, referring to the date 1909 painting, sorry, 1709 painting in the vault. The hypothesis is being verified by means of art history research supported by diagnostic study of materials. During recent restoration work on the frontal, it was possible to carry out a series of non-invasive spectroscopic measurements performed both with the more traditional techniques, that is, by means of Raman and visible reflection spectroscopies, and with an innovative hyperspectral camera. Hyperspectral imaging is a novel analytical technique based on spectroscopy with the aim of measuring the spectrum of the light coming from each point of a scene of interest. While the human eye has receptors only for three colors, blue, green, and, and red, hyperspectral imaging measures the continuous spectrum as a function of the wavelength of the light for each pixel X, Y of the scene with fine re uh, the spectral resolution. The collected data from the so-called hyperspectral image, that is a three-dimensional data cube as a function of X, Y, and lambda. During the first measurements campaign on the frontal, it was decided to focus the study on red pigments. Roman measurements allowed recognizing cinnabar on some of the red decorative plants, mortis, uh, and the bird's wings. Conversely, on the red area surrounding the restored part on the left side of the altar, um, some old red ochre was found. All Raman spectra also show the peculiar bands of gypsum. Visible refractions measurements performed on the same area confirmed those results. Indeed, visible refraction spectra of cinnabar and red ochre are um, not they are not uh, straightforwardly different as Raman ones, but are immediately distinguishable. Then the ISD spectral image on the altar was taken. Um, the slides show the results obtained for cinema with the Mireos Kira hyperspectral camera. In particular, you can see the spatial distribution of cinema employed by the artist in false red color, this one. This map has been obtained by applying a spectral angle mapper algorithm which automatically identifies all the pixels that are spectrally similar to respect to a reference one. This is shown in figure. In this prelim preliminary study, it is shown how the combination of Raman and reflectance spectroscopies with hyperspectral imaging has allowed on the one hand to uniquely characterize the different red pigments used for decoration, and on the other hand, to obtain overall images of the frontal that make it possible to visualize the whole area where this, these colors were used. Uh, I want to thank my co-workers, uh, the conservators, Dr. Marta Provera and Fabrizio Preda of Mireus, Milan, Daniel Baskevitz of Metro Germany, and a special thanks to Mr. Steven Corradi for his patient listening of my rehearsals and you for your kind attention. <laughs>